Hello friends, do you find the diagram of the human digestive system a little too complicated? Do not worry because in this video I am going to show you simple techniques that will help you to draw the diagram with ease. For that be ready with your pencil and paper and let's get started on the diagram of the human digestive system. Today we are going to draw the diagram of the human digestive system. Now there are certain technical errors that we make while drawing the diagram which makes the diagram a little unscientific. So we will draw the diagram and I will point out those parts where these mistakes are commonly made so that while drawing the diagram you are careful. So for drawing this diagram as you can see I have taken my page in a portrait mode because I will be drawing an elongated diagram and I want to keep the labelings on the right hand side. So I want to keep space on the right hand side and also have that length so that I can draw the entire digestive system. Now understand this that the entire digestive system is located in your abdominal region. So you cannot elongate and stretch the digestive system beyond a certain point. You have to keep it in a small space but yet get all the uh, minute details correct. So for that we will have to draw an axis. Now when I am drawing this axis I have to understand which is the part that is available for drawing the diagram and what is the proportion. So let us say if this is 19 centimeters then the entire digestive system should be in between 9 centimeters and 16 centimeters and the esophagus can go up till from 9 centimeters till 3 centimeters that is the proportion that we will keep in mind okay. So let us start drawing the diagram so first we will start with the esophagus because that is the easiest part to draw and then you will get a framework which will make the diagram easier for you. So as you know esophagus is a tube. So you can use a ruler to draw the esophagus if you are not confident about drawing straight lines you can use a ruler for drawing the esophagus which is an elongated tube. Now if the esophagus is here then your mouth should be somewhere here right. So I will draw the mouth you can draw the nose the mouth and the chin or you can simply draw a cavity okay now here you will draw the tongue like this and finally this structure joins the nose and this entire structure comes down and continues into the esophagus okay so that is how you get your mouth so you drew the framework of the mouth first then you draw the tongue bring down the outer border of the tongue the upper line of the tongue and join it to the esophagus make this roof of the buccal cavity as the floor of the nasal cavity then from here take a line and it joins the other side of the esophagus all right so that is how you draw the oral cavity now the esophagus is done now we are coming into the abdomen so the abdominal cavity is down here so I will start drawing the first part which is the liver. Now for the liver remember most of the liver is on the left hand side a small lobe is on the right hand side which means most of the liver is on the right hand side of our body which means the left hand side of the diagram and a little bit is on the left hand side of the body which means the right hand side of the diagram. So I will first draw the liver. Now you can understand if the body structure is like this your liver can't start from here. So if you want you can draw a framework first. But this framework is not always essential to be drawn but you can draw a framework just to understand how much breadth you should leave for the diagram okay. So we will draw the liver here. We are keeping most of the liver on the left hand side of the diagram and a little bit on the right hand side of the diagram. Now the liver is here 
the stomach starts from here but the stomach you know that the esophagus opens into the stomach and always remember that the liver is in front of the stomach so when you are drawing the liver So, when you are drawing the liver, remember that the stomach is behind, starts behind the liver. So, here I will give dotted lines to show that the stomach is starting from here, see and then I will continue drawing the stomach from here. So, the stomach now, most of the part of the stomach remains on the right hand side of the diagram that is on the left hand side of the body and a little bit remains on the left hand side of the diagram that is the right hand side of the body. So, the major part of the stomach is on the right hand side of the diagram. Okay. Do not bother too much about the shape of the diagram more or less if you keep it correct it is fine and then you draw this C shape part. You know that this C shape part is the duodenum. So, one thing that you have to keep in mind while drawing the diagram is this that the liver is in front of the stomach. So, you, when you start drawing the stomach, the liver should be with solid lines, the stomach should start with dotted lines and then it continues as a solid line. Okay. Before we go further, we have to draw the gallbladder here. Now, the gallbladder again is present behind the liver. So, Technically, it should be drawn with dotted lines. I am drawing the gallbladder with dotted lines and then the duct of the gallbladder as you can see comes down and when it comes out from behind, you can use a solid line to show the duct. All right. So, I am again drawing the gallbladder in dotted lines to show that the gallbladder is present behind the liver. Next we will draw the pancreas. So, the pancreas is present in this C shaped curve of the duodenum. So, we, are, we will first draw the pancreatic duct which meets this duct from the gallbladder. So, see I have drawn the pancreatic duct here and then the pancreas is a leaf like structure. So, you draw a leaf like structure which settles in this C shaped curve make the C shape curve big enough so that you can show the pancreas clearly but not too big. Okay? So, this is the pancreas and this is the duodenum. Now, the duodenum will continue as the rest of the small intestine that is ileum and jejunum but we have the large intestine which is present here, the colon part of the large intestine which is present here. So, the colon part of the large intestine when you are drawing you should make sure that this is in the same line with the liver. So, where the liver is ending, this is in the same line with the liver, it should not go beyond. Okay. Actually, the entire, this entire part is much compressed and the corner of the colon touches the liver. But if I compress this too much, I will not be able to show the details of this part. So, I have uh, extended this part a little bit, but always remember that technically this part, this colon part that I am going to draw is going to touch this part. But if it actually, if we actually draw like that, then I will not be able to show you the details of this region. Okay? So, when I draw the colon, I will first take a reference like line as always. As I said, make sure that your colon is in the same line with the liver where your liver ends and starts. Okay. So, this is your left reference line. Now, you know that the large intestine is a sacculated tube. So, you will not draw a straight line to show the large intestine. It is like a sac. So, we will draw sac like structures like this. Okay. And here. So, now this is looking like a tube, a sacculated tube. Make sure that there are no gaps and at the end that is where the colon starts there is a rounded part. So, on this side there is a rounded part where the small intestine will end. Now, coming back to the small intestine. So, the duodenum has ended here. 
So imagine if you draw a dotted line the duodenum is coming down. So from here your small intestine should start. Another mistake that you make your duodenum ends here and your small intestine starts from here. How is that possible? So if your duodenum is ending here your small intestine should start from here because it is actually a continuous tube. Right? Now you have to give coils. Again while giving coils make sure that the diameter of the tube remains the same. The coiling can be as you want. See I am giving the coiling as per uh, my wish. So I can just coil it in any manner I want. Just have to make sure that the diameter remains the same and there is continuity. Now some of you draw this coiling like this. This is not done. Some of you draw the coiling like this. This is not done. So when you draw the coiling make sure it is still double line and it is compact. Right. So I am drawing the diagram C. So these are the coils. The coils are very compact. One thing you just have to keep in mind that the small intestine will end here. So whichever way you coil finally it will fill up this entire space and end here. Okay. So that is what you have to keep in mind. You know sometimes while giving these coils just in case if a gap is left like this you can just fill it up with some false coils such that it is not understandable because this region needs to be totally filled up. Right and you see finally it has come and joined here on the left hand side of the diagram it has joined the large intestine. Now coming back to the large intestine, so the large intestine has ended here but it has to come to the center. So you continue with the sacculated tube as close to the small intestine as possible and finally when it comes to the center we draw an inverted flask shaped structure which ends in the anus. Right. So now I will erase all the reference lines. And I will make sure that here there are no gaps left. So it should not be that you have drawn the colon and the colon looks like this. There is a gap then food will come out of the gap. Right. So we should not keep these kind of gaps. Make sure that all the gaps are filled in everywhere. Do not try to shade any part because these diagrams for biology do not actually need too much of shading. Okay? So now we are going to draw the appendix. So I will erase all the reference lines as and where we had drawn it. Make sure that the diagram looks neat. Do not draw the left reference line such that when you are trying to erase it the entire diagram is erased. Use very light hands while drawing the reference lines. All right. So I will draw the appendix. So the appendix is as you know a finger like projections here, projection here and you can draw a tube inside the colon. You may not draw this again, you can totally skip this part as well. Okay. So that is the diagram of the human digestive system. Now we move on with the labelings. As always we will draw a dotted line and all the lines will be parallel to each other 
and the labeling has to be done in block letters. So we will first label the oral cavity, then the tongue. As I had mentioned, lines should not crisscross each other. So these lines should be parallel to each other. The esophagus, the liver, gallbladder, stomach, pancreas. Since the duodenum and the pancreas, this region is becoming extremely congested. I will probably label the duodenum on the left hand side. Large intestine, small intestine, appendix, rectum and the opening of the rectum that is the anus. Okay, so let's label oral cavity, tongue, esophagus. Now the spelling of esophagus you will find that it is either O-E-S-O-P-H-A-G-U-S or just E-S-O-P-H-A-G-U-S both are correct. One is the British spelling and another one is the American spelling. Whatever you write just stick to that for your entire answer sheet. Do not write two different spellings in the same answer sheet. Liver, gallbladder, stomach, pancreas, colon, small intestine, appendix, rectum and anus okay so the labeling is done we will also give a heading or a footer for this diagram what this diagram depicts it shows the human digestive system so that is the diagram of the human digestive system i will label the duodenum here so that is the diagram of the human digestive system the things that you have to keep in mind are one that the esophagus continues as the stomach sometimes you end the esophagus here and the stomach starts from here that is not possible so the esophagus is continuous with the stomach and that the stomach is present behind the liver two the gallbladder is present behind the liver so also we are dot drawing it with dotted lines three the duodenum continues as the small intestine so again this continuity should be clear even if you do not show it with dotted lines at least the diagram should show that it is clear the coilings in of the small intestine should be absolutely neat and clear closely packed and present in the region surrounded by the large intestine and the large intestine is a saculated structure which should actually come up here but when we are drawing we have this liberty of keeping this small gap so that we can we can show the pancreas uh, in the duodenum region okay so those are the things that you need to keep in mind while you're drawing the diagram of the human digestive system and label it in block letters as i keep on telling you and use these dotted lines and please use rulers for drawing these lines and that will give you a very neat and clean look for the diagram. Hope you found this video useful and now you can easily draw the structure of the human digestive system. Do hit the like button and share this video with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos. And do check out the full courses on our website manochacademy.com and our Android app. We have courses for physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics and computer coding. Links are given below. Stay connected with Manocha Academy and keep learning.